Uh, before we start, can I just uh, get people at the back to raise their hand if, I can, if they can hear me? Is that good? Okay, cool. Um, I actually don't really know that much about Pokemon, so... Okay, I've lost. Uh, right. <laughs> So my talk is on the evolutionary morphology of social animals, how animals that live in groups have changed their shapes over time in response to selection pressures. So we're going to start with the descent of man, which shows how early hominids gradually became more upright over time until we see the fully upright modern human. The popular explanation of why we did this was that it freed up our hands to facilitate tool use. We propose an alternative hypothesis, one we feel that has broader explanatory power, and that is that humans became more upright in order to optimize our packing efficiency. <laughs> Naturally, this is, part of a, this is part of a broader principle which says that all social animals experience a selection pressure to pack as efficiently as possible. So we're gonna start with a very simple model. Here we have some early hominids as drawn by Darwin himself. And we see the kind of shape you'd use to model them, the kind of solid you'd use to model them is, well, it's a sphere, really. And the packing efficiency of a single layer of spheres in 3D is just over 50%. Whereas a modern day human is much more like a tall cuboid, which has a packing efficiency of 100%. <laughs> so to show that this is a real evolutionary strategy and not some quirk, we're going to look at some mechanisms that could confer an evolutionary advantage to well-packed organisms. So we're going to compare a very well-packed organism, in this case, modern humans, versus a badly packed organism, for which we've chosen a kind of Lovecraftian tentacle <laughs> blob. <laughs> so here we have a cave, and a tribe of humans has moved into it. Uh, the cave is providing them with warmth, shelter, security, and art. And <laughs> we've managed to fit as many as eight humans in this cave. Eight, that's brilliant. Whereas the Lovecraftian horrors in an identical cave have only managed to fit three, which is awful. When you have a spatially restricted resource, the better packed organism is going to make a better use of that resource. Meanwhile, the humans have gone out for a walk, but suddenly the weather's turned bad. Fortunately, they're able to pack together tightly, minimize surface area, and conserve heat. Whereas the Lovecraftian horrors expose a lot of surface area, they're cold, wet, and generally not having a good day. <laughs> Let's now take a bird's eye view of our tribe of humans. We see that they're wandering around in an environment that's full of potential threats for them to stumble across. By packing together tightly, they minimize the area of their group, making them less likely to run into threats, such as this pack of wolves, this bear, or this tornado. <laughs> Whereas the Lovecraftian horrors are spread over a much greater area. They present a larger cross-section to all these threats, making them much more likely to run into things <laughs> that are going to give them some kind of evolutionary disadvantage. And fourthly, by packing together tightly, you reduce the size of your border, and the smaller your border is, the easier it is to guard it against external threats, and you have to expend fewer resources and time in watching it. So what predictions does this theory make? Well, to start with, we'd expect the dominant life form on Earth to pack very well. We'd expect something small, squishy, and very simple, like bacteria. And this theory also explains why early eukaryotic cells became symbiotic with mitochondria. <laughs> If we, um, we imagine... <laughs> yes. If we imagine the early eukaryotic cells had just some mitochondria-shaped holes in them and there was some mitochondria floating around, you just put, put them in, yeah, sure, why not? Okay. Another prediction is we'd expect to see different shapes evolve in the ocean compared to on land, because it makes sense for land animals to optimize their packing efficiency in the plane in two dimensions, whereas marine animals should logically pack in 3D. And just qualitatively speaking, we do see very different shapes evolving in the sea compared to <laughs> on land. So. And thirdly, we'd expect to see a difference between vertebrates and invertebrates. Vertebrates with their soft, squishy, deformable exterior will pack pretty well regardless of what they originally looked like if you squish them together tightly. <laughs> Whereas invertebrates with their rigid exoskeleton need to pack well as a virtue of their intrinsic shape. 
Uh, fortunately, there was a lot of work done on this already uh, by the noted biologist M.C. Escher, who... <laughs> So yeah, they pack pretty well without defamation. Uh, so I'm going to leave you with one last uh, thing to think about, which is if we really evolve to optimize our packing efficiency, then why are humans still so bad at packing? This is an exaggerated diagram, but you can see how there are gaps when you try and squish people together. And our explanation for this is that biological evolution has been replaced by human culture as um, the agent of, efficient, uh, of packing efficiency optimization. Uh, this started around 40 million years ago when we domesticated wolves. <laughs> I mean, this was a good start, but then there's still some pretty big gaps in there. Um, what if we took this stick and this bit of metal and kind of put them together? Uh, and, you know, that, that just coincidentally turns out to be really good for agriculture. Um, <laughs> but there's some, still some gaps there. So I, these clothes things we're wearing, what if, what if we made more? Um, <laughs> Yeah. Um, oh, these are great for holding things and covering my head. That's nice. Um, and then we domesticate some smaller animals to <laughs> fill in the gaps there. And since then, basically, human culture has just been about making more and more stuff to fill in the gaps <laughs> so that our packing efficiency can tend to 100% and we can become optimally packed. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>